Welcome to Around the Panhandle with TV10, a Hornby Media Group production. I am your host, Colin McLaughlin. We will be looking at things to do, places to go, and people to know throughout the eastern panhandle of West Virginia. This episode features Casa of the Eastern Panhandle. Court Appointed Special Advocates is a national organization with 948 state organizations and local programs in 49 states. They have a total of 96,929 volunteers that serve 276,809 children annually. CASA of the Eastern Panhandle believes that every child who has experienced abuse or neglect deserves an advocate working on behalf of their best interests and is given the opportunity to thrive in a safe and loving home. I interviewed CASA EP Executive Director Michelle Suddeth and volunteer advocate Dot Goodman to learn more about what they do. What we are is a group of volunteers who are appointed by judges who speak for the children and become advocates for children who've experienced abuse and neglect. CASA volunteers are very, very special. CASA volunteers that I know have said this is both um, the hardest experience they've ever had uh, professionally, as well as the most fulfilling. So what this tells you is there is a lot of training involved to become a CASA volunteer. We require 35 hours of volunteer training um, and ongoing training throughout the year. All CASA volunteers are supported by volunteer supervisors who, are, who really have their back in, their in the courtroom, in their work, um, engaging with children, and in supporting all the reporting functions. So CASA volunteers uh, become the voice of a child who's before the courts because of abuse and neglect. Um, and while that sounds really formal, uh, CASAs really become um, a part of that child's life. They are the one consistent in a, in a time of that child's life where there's a lot of upheaval, upheaval. So our CASA volunteers liaison with schools, they liaison with healthcare providers, they liaison with healthcare workers, and their job is to make sure uh, the children are moved as quickly as possible into permanency and are supported by the community as best they can. It has been a remarkable year um, during this pandemic. Um, so many struggles, not only for us as an organization, but also with the families we serve. Um, remarkably, we have done amazing uh, work in pivoting and recruiting volunteers. We've actually been able to recruit 50% more volunteers than we had last year. And we think that's because of um, you know, offering online Zoom flexibility for training. So in some ways, things have been really difficult, but a lot of good things have come out of the pandemic, and that is uh, moving our training to virtual. Uh, because of that, we've been able to serve almost 50% more kids than we normally serve because we have more, uh, more volunteers on the case. Uh, so that's all the good news. Sadly, the cases are going up um, tremendously in our community. And we know from history that in times of economic upheaval, domestic violence increases, uh, pressures on vulnerable families increase. And so the caseloads of abuse and neglect in our three counties is up by 30%. And the really tragic um, news and all of that is that uh, the cases are much more egregious. In 2019, we served over 300 children. Um, and as I said, that's a 50% increase over last year. Uh, there are about 600 children before the courts. So there is still need out there for more CASAs and there's need out there to have uh, these remarkable volunteers uh, be assigned these kids who now don't have a CASA. We're able to do training in this COVID world through uh, virtual environments. Our CASAs are able to see children virtually uh, through Zoom, through Facebook, through texting, through meeting on front porches. So our work continues. So we will continue to recruit in a very strong way um, offer more training so we uh, can include as many potential volunteers as possible from a scheduling standpoint, and then really support our volunteers. Um, it's one thing getting volunteers through the door. The second piece of this equation is making sure we um, maintain our volunteers and uh, we keep them from one year to the next. Um, so that kind of uh, sustainability over time with our volunteer base is really critical for keeping up our numbers. But just as I think about the pandemic and all of 
the challenges we faced as an organization, how well uh, the staff team has had to pivot and our volunteers, how flexible they were in, in um, adopting new, new ways of engaging with children. I don't wanna forget all the support we got from our community. Uh, places like the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation, the United Way, the city of Martinsburg, our elected officials, and all of our donors and supporters have come through in such a big way um, that we came out stronger uh, in 2020 um, than we did in 2019. And that's just pretty remarkable. And it really takes the work and commitment of this whole community to make that possible. So I have a tre tremendous amount of gratitude for all of us who are all the people who are part of the CASA family and our external supporters because we couldn't have done it without them. Um, I, um, I was doing a lot of reading about how many children were in the system, um, both in West Virginia and nationally, and, um, and I wanted to do something about it. And kind of at the same time, CASA came up, and so I looked into it, and, and I thought I can do a little bit if I become a CASA volunteer. Um, I, I feel like I have like value it uh, gives me more more life value. Um, I looked at my own life and um, things that I believe uh, that I have used in my life and where where they are in priorities. Um, I just it's a learning experience for sure. It's also made me pre more present because the children um, they are who they are, and you have to find out what they want and what they need. So when you go to see them or you talk to them. You don't, you don't have a plan. You don't have an organized plan. You just, just go and listen. And, um, and that's really great. It's great to be present, present with somebody. I've learned uh, to be pa more patient um, because the system doesn't always grow fast. Um, but I've, I've learned a lot of information about um, trauma and um, looking at um, people who've been through trauma and how it not only affects um, their life, but also their health. And um, I was a nurse by trade, and I really knew, never knew how adverse um, childhood experiences could um, change your, your physical health. Um, and so I've learned a lot about, um, about trauma and, um, and resilience and um, a lot of things that people go through that I never knew about. My best experiences um, probably are I have a, an adolescent um, who I was really intimidated about um, working with. And um, my teammates encouraged me to just just do it, you know, use your heart and use your brain and just just go ahead and do it. You'll know what to do. And I did. And I think it's a great experience that a 16 year old boy um, has been able to call me and just talk, talk on the phone for an hour and tell me what he needs, what he wants and what he's worried about. And that's really been very gratifying. There's so much to learn. There's really great support um, in the community. Uh, the children, you change a child's life, really. Um, I think the big thing that people, everybody needs, adults and children, is just somebody that they can trust and talk to. And to be that person is, is, really, is really neat. I'd encourage anybody to be a volunteer. Um, just all you need is a heart and, and a desire. CASA EP's Berkeley County office is located at 336 South Queen Street in Martinsburg. You can learn more about CASA EP by visiting their website, www.mycasaep.org. To become a volunteer advocate, email volunteer at mycasaep.org or call 304-263-5100.